nine days preaching the same thing until something happens. Did you hear what I say? Um, I remember in the mid 70s, I had the privilege in the mid 70s to attend the Tuku Tenderesa revivals. Do you know what that was? Somebody said the Tuku. And one day we were with my father in a day fellowship for Tuku Tenderesa, the East Africa revival. A whole primary school ground was full. Men and women seated the whole day. There were five preachers that day. Preacher one. The topic was the same. Come let us reason together. So every preacher was preaching the same message. Come let us reason together. I was wondering what is the wisdom behind, you know, having the same verse a whole day. Why, why can't they have five different messages? Uh, you know, it was just their method. Praise God. Every mission they would do, it would have a theme. So if you are going to an area witnessing, the theme could be Jesus is the way, you know. <laughs> so every home you enter, Jesus is the way. The other home, Jesus is the way. You know, same message. And I think uh, the, their impact was so much, we are still talking about it. Come on. And so uh, I'm not saying this is the same revival because the revival has advanced into transformation. So uh, Genesis 22 verse 17 is on the screen uh, or on the wall behind me. If we read from verse 16, just to refresh our minds, he said, and by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, blessing I will bless you. And multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sad which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. Praise the Lord. This promise to Abraham is a promise that has given birth to the New Testament church. Mm. We are here because of that promise. Because Abraham obeyed God and sacrificed his only son, God made a very powerful promise, a decree. Praise God. And this promise and decree, because whatever God says, he doesn't unsay. He doesn't return those same words. Isaiah says when his word goes out of his mouth, never returns void. When it goes, it will go accomplishing the purpose and the reason it was sent. Are we together? And we will be dissecting this verse up to Sunday afternoon, even tonight at 5 o'clock, I mean 5.30, when we come back here in the evening. We are using a formula. We, you lunch our people. We can also share the same formula with you. Uh, from your house to church. Church to work. When you finish work, church. Home. That's it. You know, home, church, work, church, home. Because you don't sleep here. Are we together? So that formula we can share with you. Glory to God. Uh, yesterday morning I was teaching on the same in the service. Uh, in the morning and it's on Facebook. You can go at night and watch the same message and get the same revelation. Hear this thing until it becomes part of you. Because faith comes by hearing. Amen. But I say there are about seven things that I've drawn from this verse that I'm sharing. The first one I said was the blessing that is, is, is a very powerful key that's going to help us to walk of possessing, taking over the gates of our enemies and the blessing of obedience. Because Abraham obeyed, you can see how he ended wonderful things. So if you're walking in disobedience to his word, you know as you're dreaming, praying, uh, and hearing God, he is actually giving instructions. He's actually giving instructions. 
you know, I woke up in the morning. I, I, for me, you know, me, I dream daily. Five dreams, four, three, one, two. Very instructional. God so, sorts my issues very easily uh, because I'm usually tired. So when I'm asleep now, he downloads. When I wake up, and there was a certain ministry somewhere we worked with many years ago. And we no longer do. And it, everything was, you know, there were times, you know, things were not very good. And so anyway, we parted ways uh, nicely nicely. Apostolic people part ways and nicely and then they become part of the way even after. So the Lord the whole night was speaking to me on some of the things that are out of order that probably uh, he wants me to be involved and what I need to do to bring some healing and restoration. You know, and I was amazed. So it's incumbent of me to obey because every time God is about to give you something First, he gives you a test. Somebody say exam. Muliacha wa toto exam. Mukafikiria muliacha shule. Hakuna shule muliacha. God is still testing Abraham. God is still testing the church. God is still testing us. And so, I, 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 I'm, I'm feeling it's a test for me. And if I pass that test, I don't know, he may say, now that you have done this thing, and you have not been blocked by your emotions, you have followed the principles of the word. In blessing, I will bless you. So I don't want to fail to reach here. So pick this one point. It's very, very important. Obedience is a key that will cause you to embrace every promise that God has given. Praise God. Because uh, I, as I study the book of Deuteronomy, I find so many quotations of the prophetic. You, I will do this, but you must do this. Uh, you know, I will do this, and, but you must do this. So don't think 2018 has just been placed into your hands on a silver platter like they say in the English. But there are certain things we need to do to walk in those dimensions that God is promising. So everything he says you do, just do it. If you are in that wedding of Gan of Galilee and you are the relative on the other side and Pandeenu Hijapata wine, you will be complaining and saying, you know, we came to this wedding, they only gave our uh, in laws wine as we never received anything. But don't be afraid, Jesus is in the wedding. Uh, yeah, he's in the wedding. But there is a key that is going to make sure your side receive wine. The mother will tell them, the servants, do whatever he tells you to do. John chapter 2. And if you do what he tells you to do, there will be refreshment. They will taste something they never tasted before. If you do what God is saying, you will encounter things you never encountered in 2018. Are we together? Amen. <clears throat> so, obedience is a major key. Are we together? Actually, if you go to 22 verse 1 and 2, you will see the test. You will see the test. This is Abraham's test, which is an example. He always gives somebody a test. Now, it came to pass after these things, the things in the chapter before, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. All right. Number 2, verse 2, and he said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and over him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains on which I shall tell you. I will not tell you the mountain for now. Let me see whether first of all you are ready to obey. Then as you go, I will show you which mountain among the mountains of Moriah. Do you see how God works? He gives Abraham a test, praise God. Just keep it in verse, okay, here he rose up early, but just keep it in verse 2. What thing did God use to test Abraham with? The thing he loved most. All right. We take stock. I was driving here and I was thinking about this verse. I was trying to ask God, in this season, are there things I love most? I was trying to check whether there are things I love now so much. Sikupata, lakini... I think I like my things. I don't hate my things. So which means God can come for anything. Okay. Do you have things you love? Huh? Be warned. 
He will ask for something you love most. You know, we read the Bible and we pass quickly. But you think about Abraham. He's being told, you waited for 75 years to get a child. I mean, 25 years. Because he was 75, then 100 years he got a baby. After 25 years of waiting, finally Isaac is here. Then you show up for him. What do you mean? Are we together, God? And I'm sure he never told Sarah, eh, mutoto, ameitishwa kwa hivyo kesho, mapema ninaenda tukanini. Apana, if he did that, uh, uh, actually I hear some people say, I've never checked it in scripture, I think I will, saying after he operation, na kujaribu ku sacrifice, hapo ndiyo mama litoroka. Uh, actually, from that time he lost his wife. Uh, you know, until Sarah died then, and he wakanda kunini, kuzika. Because this is not a small matter. We unaza kukaa. You almost think is human sacrifice. You know, your sons. These are very serious matter. Literally, it is that whom he loved and the only thing he had, his inheritance was attached to Isaac. And so let me just say what has been said before. Everyone has an Isaac. And if you're going to go anywhere in the spirit to the next level, when Isaac is identified, be ready to let go. And that's how I think I've survived all these 40 something years I've been saved. I'm a young man, but by God's grace, listen, every time my life shifted to a new place, he required me to sacrifice something. Whether it is money, you know, uh, offering, unatoa kila kitu konayo, unasema either, or, you know, levels of prayer that require sacrifice. Si ule maombi tuwe kawaida kwa shawa, kuna hile maombi ingine uko kwa bush. I've lost one person because of the test. I hope I'll not lose another. Okay, so, um. You are Isaac, as soon as you and God can identify, this is the thing you love most. Atakuja tu, aseme, unaza kunipea. Unaza kunipea. The early church, the Bible records, they gave even houses. How many Kenyans have reached a level of giving out the house? Uh, cars. It's easy to give out cars. It's easy to give out cars. But a house? And time I told my wife, Tumesumbuka sana kujenga nyumba. Finally, imeisha. Kila kitu kwa sawa. Hey. Why all that struggle? I mean, so what was that big thing we were trying to do? Just sleeping there one night. Sini kitana nile tukama ile mulira rauko. I mean, so what's the big deal? I said, by the way, you know, just in case, uh, you have the keys of a new house. Anything you cannot give is a blockage to your life. Andika yo pole pole. Andika yo. Anything I cannot give is a blockage. Is that still the gospel? God himself gave his only begotten son. That's why you're here. And that's why I'm here. And blessed be his holy name. Hallelujah. Why? Because we are stewards, uh, caretakers of the things that God has given us. Praise God. Let me go to point number two. There's another key word in this Abrahamic matter in verse 17 that is critical. It is the word blessing. Somebody say blessing. blessing. If we understood blessing, I think we will not struggle. Yesterday I said something interesting. It's very important and very good and very refreshing when you receive a miracle. A miracle healing, miracle something, miracle something is a blessing. I mean it's good. But there's something greater than a miracle. It's called the blessing. The blessing is a package that contains all the miracles you need. The blessing. 
Praise God. And we said yesterday, uh, we can say it again, for those who are not here, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22, uh, the wise man said something very powerful, that the blessing of the Lord maketh one rich. 10, Proverbs 10, 22, uh, receive divine speed, brother. The blessing of the Lord maketh one rich. Uh, so if I use the word rich as a preacher, don't kill me. Uh, it's not prosperity. It's reading the Bible. We're together. And uh, we, we are not prosperity preachers, but we are not poverty preachers. Because we have a lot of anointing. If we can have people prosper, how about if we release poverty? <laughs> so, uh, the blessing of the Lord maketh one rich. So we need that blessing. Praise God. Riches spiritually, riches physically, every dimension of riches is because of the blessing. Mr. Blessing. And he adds no sorrow with it. Notice, it's not it adds. No, it adds. It's not it. It is he. Because a blessing is a person. He. I have Jesus in me. He is Mr. Blessing. I am blessed. I'm walking in the blessing of the Lord. So I'm not lucky. I can't do gabbering. I can't kwachua. I can't do all these games Kenyans are doing. And so forth. Because I have the blessing of the Lord in my life. And by the way, gabbling and all these uh, lucky things is in the category of fortune telling and palm reading. It is, these are the babies of Jezebel the, and witchcraft. So anybody involved in uh, gambling and trying your lucky number, you're walking the same corridor as stargazers and astrologers, as it were, fortune tellers, palm readers, diviners, and Facebook diviners now are on duty. You put your name there, then they tell you how this year you even have a baby or by next year. Have you seen those things? That's witchcraft. Why are you exposing yourself to such, such trial and error? It's trying to tell the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you can't tell me this. We look for this app because it, uh, the witchcraft has also gone digital. So if you are doing those kind of things, please stop them. Did you hear the preacher? Stop it. Don't try to ask anybody on Facebook to tell you how your future will be like. You are trying to sign an open check to the devil to steal your wealth. I know I'm chasing a rabbit, but this rabbit is good. Let me explain. In the 90s, there used to be a man in KCB with a rasta. He used to speak with a hoarse voice. 89, 90, 91, 92. Tupa shiringi. Do you remember those who are older? Tupa shiringi. New again in Nairobi. There used to be a man here. Tupa shiringi. So people would want to see. So they say, ah, shiringi ni nini, wajia tutupe tuwanyeshu, unatupa shiringi. As soon as you give your shilling to that world, you have signed a check that they steal your money in the spirit. That's why you're struggling in the city. You need to come to a prayer meeting and call back your money wherever you lost it. Every evil door you open to throw your shillings, you need to call back, of course, after you repent. Because the person who trusts in God is blessed. But the person who trusts in man is cursed. The Bible says. Alright. The blessing. The Hebrew word is the word barak. Which is also Swahili for baraka. It's an amazing word. Now. If you go back to Genesis 22. The Bible says in blessing. I will bless you. Uh, let's, let's look at. Uh, the context in which that blessing is mentioned, uh, if we go back to Genesis 17, there is a verse there, if we read like 14, 15, 16 of chapter 17 of Genesis, uh, <clears throat> the, the Sarah, Sarah was barren. Sarah didn't have a baby. And before Isaac came, the Bible says something. Uh, Abraham fell, uh, okay, let's read from here. Then God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. The difference is very little, I and H. Uh, that's another message. We leave that to the preachers. 
verse 16. Uh, her name has changed. And I will bless her and also give you a son by her. Then I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of peoples shall be from her. Wow. That's a very big blessing. Uh, verse 17. Abraham laughed. Do you see who Jawa Mecheka? So this blessing that has been pronounced over Abraham and Sarah is a blessing over Isaac. It's a blessing of a son. So her womb being opened by God after years of barrenness is referred to as a blessing. Are we together? So if you have been barren financially for years, you and your people, none of you have ever hit millions. May you have an encounter. But now, don't just simplify it. You need to read that chapter before and see when he was visited by those strangers, he slaughtered a young goat. <laughs> have you ever slaughtered for God? In other words, there is all, I don't know why, heaven wants to do things on the earth, but every time in scripture, God doesn't do everything, he allows us a little window to do something. Then he will do this and that. I know we are talking about grace, but grace came because Jesus died on the cross. That's why we have grace. So grace is not free. It costed God his son. Praise the Lord. And so the blessing in this scripture is Sarah getting her womb open. And I pray this year, uh, women who, and men who can't have babies this year, we will pray for you. A miracle is going to happen. You will be blessed. Hallelujah. Something will happen. Amen. I was preaching in Embo uh, a few years ago. And there was a woman doing praise and worship. But she, she was unable to have children. And this week, and they asked me, what do you want to preach about? I said, kingdom fire. I have never heard anything about kingdom fire. So I was preaching about the kingdom, the power of the kingdom, and the fire that is in the kingdom. And then as we were doing worship, because I sing and preach, I, I, I noticed the lady and then I remembered that she had no children. And that anointing that afternoon, I said, in the name of Jesus, now you will have children from this time on. She got twins. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. That may not be your situation. Your situation could be educational. You love education so much. You love going to school. But you know, nothing happened. No one helped you nowhere. But you still love education and you lead a trying, but you have no resources or abilities. God is able to bless you and open that gate of education and possess that gate of education. Hallelujah. So this blessing, the context when God to tells Abraham, I'll bless you. Uh, even through Isaac, you can also see in chapter 18, the same thing is repeated. In Genesis 18, verse 10, uh, I think we're just going to deal with the blessing. 18, verse 10, he said, I certainly, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Sarah was listening in the tent door which was behind him. What happened in verse 11? Ah, now Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age, and Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. Some of you are already past the age in certain areas, but that's notwithstanding. God will bless you. Hallelujah. Verse 12. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, after I have grown old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? Hmm. But Sarah is laughing, but let's see how the blessing was activated. Go to the book of Hebrews. Because in the list of heroes of faith, which this year you shall enter, the list of the heroes of faith. Do you want to enter into Hebrews 11? Uh, that by faith, so and so accomplish this and that. Uh, we believe we will enter that book. Now, verse 11, 11, 11, 11, 11. 
P.O. Box 111. I used to be in a high school whose address was P.O. Box 111, Meru. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. Did she have faith? I thought she loved. But at the end of the day, the Bible gives us the conclusion. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive and she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Yesterday I told the church here, if we can embrace the promises of God, this is how we'll possess the gates of our enemies. This is, where we will, this is how we will step everywhere God wants us to step by embracing all the promises of God. And there are many. Glory to God. And so Sarah received strength to conceive. That strength was part of the package of the blessing. And I pray you also receive this strength. Receive strength to do what you must do. Receive strength to carry God's seed and God's mandate and God's purpose for your life. Glory to God. If you're going to uh, possess, if we're going to possess, we need this divine strength. Praise the Lord. Look at two more verses in the same Genesis 26 and then we close. Chapter 26 of Genesis. We've seen Sarah walked in the blessing. I want you to see the context of this blessing. That in blessing, I will bless you. Now, verse 3 here of Genesis 26. This is the son Isaac when he was of age. He was told, dwell in this land and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants... I give all these lands and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham your father. Wow. So the same Abrahamic blessing is passed on to the second generation. Later we will see Isaac also blessed Jacob. Wow. That blessing is passed on until when Jesus came he came to bless us. The Bible says in the Acts of the Apostles Glory to God. And when he began to preach, teach his disciples, raise the first church and first, I mean the first uh, apostles, he began to teach them about the blessing. Blessed is the poor in heart and so forth and so forth and so forth. So Isaac dwell in the land. Again, instructions of the spirit and obedience will trigger the blessing. Because, let's read from verse 1 because of context. Uh, for the sake of young people who are here. Why young people? They don't read the Bible. There was a farming in the land beside the first farming that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of Philistines in Gerah. So farming has moved Isaac to a new place. Verse 2. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. I like the instructions of the spirit. This January, why we have this nine days meeting, uh, lunch one evening, is so that we can hear every instruction and as we pray, our year will be better because we are hearing what we should do. For Isaac, dwell in this land of Gera. Don't go to Egypt because you are already on the move. And if you go to Egypt, there will be trouble there. Stay here. And then verse three, dwell in the land here. Praise God. And I will be with you and I will bless you. You see, this blessing is as a, as a result of obedience. But it's a blessing so much so that he will be able to have food. He will be able to uh, dwell in the times of famine and not suffer. Glory to God. Blessing places you where you don't struggle no more. Glory to God. May this be your portion in the name of the Lord. Down there in verse 24, or the same chapter 26, here's the last verse, the Bible says, verse 24 of the same chapter 26. It says, And the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bless you and multiply your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake. Wow. That thing of Abraham obeying is now blessing the next generation. 
your simple obedience to God's instruction, hearing the prophetic word and obeying and doing prophetic acts and doing things will bless the next generation. When you hear an instruction, for instance, to sow and give some amount of money that is major or release something that you so love, that triggers a move of God that actually will affect even your children. Did you hear them say of Timothy? There's faith that is in you. Hey, we trust it in Lois, your grandmother. And your mother Eunice. There's a three generation of blessing. Because somebody obeyed the instructions of God, Lois. And she passed it on to Eunice. Passed it on to Timothy. Glory to God. So may you become a matriarch, a mother of the nations, a mother that anybody who comes under your hands will walk in the same grace that you carry. May you become a father that anybody will ever come under your mentorship two generations to come they will be blessed. Anybody who will ever come under what I carry in two generations, even 300 years from now, they will still be talking of a man who used to preach in the city center of Nairobi. I hope Nairobi will still be there. Hallelujah. May your obedience release a blessing to generations. And this will lead us to a message that Pastor Gigi likes to preach. Generational blessings. <laughs> How they override generational curses. Glory to God. So obedience and blessing. And in the evening, I will show you something about multiplication. This will shift your life completely. And remember everything we preach it happens. Everything we preach in the spirit, it becomes an event. It becomes something tangible. You will now walk in the blessing. Hallelujah. As you obey the instructions of the Lord. Can we stand up and pray together? Even as we let us go. Father, we give you praise.